Hello and welcome to Hilscher's Gateway Tutorial. This is Product Manager Armin Beck speaking, and I will lead you the next couple of minutes through a general introduction of how to configure a Hilscher Gateway. During the tutorial I'm using a NetApp device by myself, converting ProfiNet device I/O to ProfiBus DP Master. Here are the basic needs. You need a powered NetApp NetBrick or NetLink device, a connected USB service cable, a running Cyclone.NET configuration tool and an install device driver. First you have to install the Cyclone.NET configuration tool. Once done you can start it from the Windows Start menu. After Cyclone.NET has been started, it will welcome you with a grey empty bus line in the middle of the screen. So, you see it here? To the right hand side of the window you will find the device catalog. Here. From this device catalog we have to drag and drop the correct device we have in use and pull it to the grey bus line. Since I have a NetApp device right in front of me, I'm choosing now NetApp 100XXXX. See it here? Since it is not personalized, it has still the extension XXXX. This stop line here is representing the diagnostic interface, respectively the USB port I'm using. In order to configure the NetApp device, we have now to double click the device icon in the middle of the screen. Then Cycon will automatically search for all devices connected. Double clicking the icon will find my device connected here in the top line of this window. To complete the device assignment we have to check this small tiny box here and press apply afterwards. Whether for configuration or diagnostics Cycon will use now this communication path for all communications from and to NetApp. As next, we have to configure our primary and secondary network. Afterwards, we have to press apply to complete the personalization. So we leave this, go to settings, and then you have here the settings of the primary and secondary network. I'm choosing, of course, the Profinet IO device to the left hand side and the Profibus DP Master to the right hand side. Along with Cycon also the firmware modules for NetApp device are installed. Once you have chosen the correct protocol to the left and the right hand side of NetApp, Cycon will automatically propose the correct firmware in the middle of the screen. In order to be sure that the correct firmware is loaded, you have to choose the proposed firmware and download it with the download button. Cycon gives also a hint if a master license is required for the chosen conversion. In my special case a master license is required since I am using Profibus DP master functionality. The license can be requested on demand from our sales. You will not get a firmware operative on that app that requires a master license. Just in case you have forgotten to order a license you can make a post order. To do so, use the licensing entry in the menu to the left. There you have to fill out a request form that you have to send to Hilcher. Usually within a day you will get back a valid license that you can download to the gateway. Now let us wait until the firmware download is finished. There you go. Basically it doesn't matter if you configure the primary or secondary network first. Since I'm using the Profibus DP master, I'm preferring the secondary network configuration first. To configure a master, you have to import the electronic datasheet files first. Let us leave this window. Since the gateway is now personalized, you see now the gateway being extended by this bus line. To import the GSD or ADS files, use the import button from the top menu in Cycon. In my special case, 
I have to switch to Profibus DP GSD file extension. Here's the file that I'm importing now. Yes. Cycon will now automatically update its device catalog. This will take a while. Devices being imported by GSD files can be found under the tab Vendor. I can now find my Siemens slave in this device catalog, here. I'm now dragging and dropping it to the Profibus DP master line. A double click on the device icon will open the configuration dialog. In this configuration dialog you find anything that is needed to configure the slave properly. Since the slave is a modular slave I have to choose the correct input and output modules from the upper list. I double click them all to shift them into the middle window. Down below you will find a summary of what I have configured so this is pretty much it for this slave now. So we can leave this dialog. Cycon automatically addresses the slaves in ascending order. My slave has now the address 2 but physically it has the address 4 so we have to change the address. To do so right click to the master icon and choose Profibus DP master configuration. Here you find also the bus parameters here you can change the bolt rate. We have the slave that has been dragged and dropped to the bus line. We will find also the station list and the address list. See here where the inputs and outputs are being placed. And here I can change the bus address of my slave. You see now here Cycle has changed the address from 2 to 4. Now we can switch over to the primary network configuration. In my case I have to configure the Profinet device. Right click to the icon and choose Profinet device configuration. This window will offer you a lot of configuration parameters. Usually you have not to change anything there. The only thing of interest are the inputs and output length of our Profinet I.O. device. I will now adjust the I.O. length of the Profinet side to the length of the Profibus DP master side. The overall length was 4 bytes inputs and 4 bytes outputs. We have now properly set up the primary and secondary network configuration. We can switch now to the I.O. mapping configuration. We have to double click the gateway icon and choose a signal mapping dialog from the menu. Cycon will offer you then in a split screen the number of inputs and the number of outputs of the primary and secondary network. See here. To the left hand side you will find the inputs and outputs of the left network and to the right hand side you will find the inputs and outputs of the right hand side. See here, you will find here my Siemens slave and its inputs and outputs listed. In order to map anything from one side to the other, we have to highlight inputs or outputs from one side and drag and drop it to the other side. See here. In the lower part of the window you will find what we have already mapped. So the same for the other side, drag and drop it to here and the list down below is extended by each mapping. Finally I have mapped all inputs of one side to the outputs of the other and vice versa. 
There are further parameters that can be mapped as well. For example, if you're interested in if a slave is running or not on the Profinet I.O. site, drag and drop the slave active bit. If you are not interested in a manual configuration, you can use the auto map feature. But before showing you the auto map feature, I have to remove all my mappings already set. You will see that the auto map feature will do all the things I've done before manual now automatically. Press apply and there you go. Sycon will automatically map all the inputs and outputs found from the left port to the right port in a one-to-one -one mapping. So this is all about the I.O. mapping configuration. The gateway has now been set up properly. Finally, we can make a download of all what we have configured. To do so, right-click the gateway and choose the download button. Since all gateways have a flash memory, all the data are stored non-volatile. If I'm now watching my slave connected, I see that the red LED is going off. On the NetApp, the Profibus DP Master LED is becoming green. The communication is running fine. After the download, you see the gateway being marked in green color. This shows you that Sycon is in online mode and communicating to the gateway. In online mode, configuration is no longer possible, but diagnostics. Sometimes it may happen that your Profibus slave may not work. For this reason, Sycon and the firmware in the gateway offers you advanced diagnostics. To use online diagnostic functionality, right-click to the gateway icon and choose the primary or secondary network you want to look at. You see that the configuration is no longer available and grayed out, but here we have the diagnostic possibilities. For any protocol that is supported by the gateway, Sycon offers a wide variety of extended structures that can show you the internal status of the gateway. You will find counters there, status information about rejected telegrams, all the things like that, that giving either you or us at the hotline information of what's going on just in case the system is not running. Here, for example, you see the counters running for requesting the inputs and outputs from the slave. A lot of information that I cannot explain you in all details in this tutorial. The same you can choose for the primary network, which is a Profinet device I.O. At the moment it is in stop mode since I have not connected any Profinet I.O. controller, but you see similar status information as we have seen it for the Profibus DP Master. I hope you enjoyed my tiny little demonstration. I'm pretty sure that you now have learned the first steps of how to configure a gateway device of Hilcher. And you are well prepared now for your first own project.